what, uh, what you feel is right to do. Other people don't think like that. I'm not saying they big or small, but it's 1% of the people that even, it's only 2 or 3% of the people that have real goals in life, you know, the purpose of life, you know. So imagine who would have those type of goals. Okay, get turkeys ready, we are in the full of variety. Oh, what's this thing? Explain evolution. So I'm going to explain the riot in the field house in 63, when I stood up on the boxing ring and said, charge, okay, no big deal. But I did an extra year. Instead of going home in 63, I went home in 65. In fact, it was a few days after Malcolm was martyred. I came home. He was martyred February 21st. I got home March the 7th, two weeks after he was martyred. Iron Power. The story about Posey, does anybody remember this? Yeah. Posey. I was only 17. I didn't want to, I'm going to explain to them. Because, see, all of my friends are like Posey. They be Negroes. And some of them even, like now, openly work. You know, like a, as a counselor in a drug program. You know, right, yeah. And I, uh, some of the big uh, programs that they have, you know, some of my friends manage those programs for the government. No, I got it, I got it, I'll get to it, you know, where are we going? And 65 and 66, when the government came to me with my other friends and eased me in the dope, and if I wouldn't have got in the dope, I wouldn't be here. You see what I mean? So who's been managing my progress all along? Boss man. By doing something against me, that's why I have confidence in him. No, can you look back to all of those years. Everything they did against me was for me. Right? Who didn't want to go home in 63 and 64? I, did, I wanted to go home. But I went home a year later, a whole year at that, at that age was a long time, right? It came out best for me because I had gained the discipline, the self-control, and I became a little petty, uh, uh, well, nobody had seen a Muslim before, hardly. And I was a vegetarian, I still lifted weights, my friends was boxers, all them George Foreman's period people. They was all Charlie Shad, they all went running in the hills. And what do I do now? They don't run in the hills no more. I do. Because those habits, I kept doing them. And when they, my friends, influenced me not to work at the factory no more. Nah, I just worked at the factory. I, hey, that's a good job for those days. It was a wonderful job. I was happy to be out of penitentiary and 20 years old and never even, uh, they never paid, well they did pay us a job. They paid us 50 cents a day to fight forest fires and they were so, boss man is good to you. If you act right, he'll treat you right. he pay you 50 cents a day to risk your life. Fight forest fires, yes he will. He'll do that. So I give him his credit. He'll give you 50 cents a day to risk your life. Yes. He thinks you're important. Very, very important. But they held me up from going home. And by the time I went home, I had incorporated the, 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 the culture of the nation of Islam. Uh, no smoking. I used to smoke. I didn't smoke anymore. No drinking. I didn't drink anymore when I left. When we went out on Friday night, I would just take a, a fifth of wine, you know, they call it guzzling. You just open your throat, blub, 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 and you can, you can drink it down. You open your throat. This is a technique that niggas have. 
and you could guzzle. Some people could guzzle a half a gallon. I could. I could just turn my head back and blub, 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 blub. Guzzling, we call it. And you could take it down. That's how we started our night on Friday night. Blub, 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 blub. And uh, you could tell that in a few hours, you crazy and everything else. That stuff kick in. But I came out, oh, what do you eat? I don't eat no, none of that old meat. What? Pork? You eat pork? Heck no, I don't eat no pork. Pork is poison. You know, pork is a rat, cat, and a dog. You know, that's how they did right, man, fix that thing up. You eating that. And look at all that snot. Look at the, the, the you know, and the pig feet, and the pig, uh, you know where the pig feet are? Don't it look like snot in there? Yeah. Uh, the pig feet. Anyway. They rescued me from all that. I could have been like Zay Shocker or Fahim Shuaib even. I could have, I could have been like them. Abdul Malik. I could have been like Siraj Wahaj. I could have been like Siraj. I could have, I could have been like them. Can you imagine? I could have been like them. I could have been like my friends in Oakland. And, and here we are. You have to admit, no matter what happened, we, we're trying to fit in our best place. Okay, and I'll be quick. Necessary evolution. They try to stop any and all momentum. They try to stop this. We're not going to stop it. We're going to have it. We're going to have it because that's what we're, we're doing. And if you were sitting down there this morning hurting like I was, you wouldn't want to do that. That's why I wrote these this morning. I wrote all of this this morning. Before I didn't have coffee, I ain't had no coffee. Before I could even move. Before I even could put clothes on because you couldn't, if you take the clothes off, it's too hard to put them on. You know, it's too hard to put to reach down and put one foot in a in one of these whatever this is trousers. Because remember, I used to say this is called it the pain trap. If I was tortured, I would say, "Oh, boss man, I was just playing. You don't want to hurt old Musa." And I have here a psychological trap. That's what that was, psychological trap. In a way, I was telling them the truth, but I have here Tafwi and Riga that I was setting him up without even knowing it. That's what this is, domesticating the white man. Yeah, we have strategic planning and all that, but most of it is coming from Allah. Because when Allah give you the time, it's like this. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi threw dust in the face of the, the Quraysh, there's dust everywhere. The horses kicking up dust, camels kicking up dust everywhere. If he pick up camp, uh, a handful of dust and throw it at the enemy, it has no effect on nothing. But it confounded the enemies. And, and, and the Quran say, you didn't throw, I threw. But technically, everybody knew he threw. So Mufasim say that he threw, but Allah ain't. In other words, all of this stuff, if we just figured it out, we wouldn't figure out nothing. But regular old colored stuff. We have to stop this climate of insanity, wars, murders. Insane solutions. Are any of the solutions the white men have insane? Uh, yes. Every last one of them. We want to bring back balance and harmony. He wants to bring back uh, imbalance. Pandemic. Artificial intelligence. Anti-human. Okay. 
that should be enough for an actor. That's what we want to talk about, and that's what we talked about. I hope it makes sense, but that's where we are. And we say, bump the white man. Bump the system. If anybody's scared of them, they can be scared. Scared all you want. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it to be afraid of a fool. And the white man's a damn fool. Everything he does is insane. Everything he's doing right now is insane. And Biden can't help Biden because <laughs> Biden trying to do, he got one or two good, well, we're going to have a this and another. It ain't going to do nothing. He's bad as they are almost. He's a bad boy. I need questions or comments. Any questions or comments? Yeah, well, uh, a sister said, Alhamdulillah, uh, mashallah, your place was predetermined. You know, she was, I guess this was when you were talking about boss man would do different things. Right, 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 right. It got you to where you are, you know. Uh, let me check the other video over here. Um, okay, those are just brothers giving some salams. Uh, let me okay, check. now with this other stuff while you read. Uh, we need a little assistance in this. Remember, we want y'all to write us, contact us from time to time, but we want a certain number of y'all to download all of these lectures with that little gadget they got. They can download it, right? Okay, we want you also to download all our sabakoons, right? And all of our... Uh, not movies, but whatever they call it. And send me a couple of copies of the downloads. Like if you make a download for yourself, make a download copy for me and send it to me. The more we get, the more we better, the better it'll get. Because remember, out of all the great lectures Malcolm made, we only have a few of them. 30 lectures, and as others, he made hundreds of talks. He just like you do all these talks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not that we can prepare for the next thing, but see, if boss man disappear you, he'll try to disappear your record. And if he disappeared for five or ten years, the period of when this stuff is functional will have passed. Because now things are moving so fast. Like if you play the ballad of the bullet now, it don't make no sense. The ballad of the bullet. Right? And all that, uh, they were in a different era. It's like that was a... Uh, people used to get mad because I'd talk about Beyond Malcolm. And I would say, yeah, Beyond Malcolm. I said, so actually we're beyond that. Basically, he'd be saying, you're just a nigga. Malcolm did this and Malcolm did that. I said, so do we, 10 times. I said, everything Malcolm did, we do it 10 times over. If he visited Africa, we didn't visit Africa 100 times. We visited Africa every other month sometimes. And sometimes I said, you visited Africa many times. And you was the only woman speaking at a program with thousands of people. Uh, in South Africa, and you're from here. They didn't have any woman from there. Look at the honor you had. Because there, a lot of women didn't go to the masjid. And I remember I was at one rich lady's house, her and our daughter, uh, they call it creative avoidance. They're supposed to go to the masjid one day. We're going to go to the masjid for Juma. I said, well, did you make it? No, we drove around until it was over. Creative avoid avoidance. They just didn't go because women don't go to the masjid in South Africa. And now they go. Yes, is there any more there? Yeah, um, this is uh, the brother that had set up that program you were a part of earlier this year. He's asking, um, 
or he said, in the name of Allah, most compassionate, most merciful. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Abdullah Lin Musa. This is Sabr from Toronto, Canada. We would like to know if we can have your blessing of your speech in the 42nd anniversary of Islamic Revolution's webinar on February the 13th at 7 p.m. Sure. All right, I'll let him know. And I'll forward him your phone number so he can yeah. talk to you specifically. Um, and I think yeah, we we'll definitely do that. Let me see here. Uh, the 42nd anniversary, do you know? Yeah. How happy we was on the second and third anniversary. Unbelievable. Nobody believed it. We didn't believe it. I mean, I loved it. But I said, man, do you know what's going on here? This is the third anniversary. Like, maybe that's 82 or something. This is the third anniversary, man, of the revolution in Iran. It's the third anniversary. Then it kept going on and on, and now people take it for granted. Right. But look, there's more pressure on them now than it was in those days. Yeah. And they're still rolling. That's why I tell them every time, I said, man, uh, y'all is rolling. You don't even know. And they don't. You know why? They're thinking about uh, the prices are high and the government could do better. They're not like watching the world and saying, let me see, they have dictatorships here, they have liars over there, they have this and that, and, and we got the Islamic government. They don't say that. Some people understand what they got. I believe at least 30 or 40 percent really love it. But it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Any more comments? Yeah, there was a, a comment that I saw on the uh, on the Kovita video. One of the brothers, you know how sometimes one of the brothers said songs with like a question mark and an exclamation point. You know how sometimes the brothers get about yeah. music and stuff. Yeah. One of the brothers didn't like that, but I, like outside it, of no, that, but you know. we put look at the context. Right. We put. Donald Trump on that, the lady. Mm -hmm. It was related to Donald Trump. I yeah, kept my distance. Yeah. And she's singing to, I didn't see it, but once. She's singing to the the police, or the, the, the staff and all of that. I kept my distance. <laughs> and it's making fun of it. I didn't even listen to it to figure out what she was making fun of it. But it was a direct connection. You got to look. Yeah. The connection was between Donald Trump, Argentina, Covida, Evita, who became big, and her husband Juan Peron had, I can tell you, movies to go see them. Grey Wolf, something like that. Go look at Grey Wolf. Yeah, look at Grey Wolf. And the, and the, the white folks will tell you. You know, it was a documentary. That's one that I remember. Then watch that, and then all of this will hook, you be hooked up on all of that. And we're saying, look at all of that, and look at what we're all dealing with, and look at the roots of it. everything happening here have roots. And all you can see is the fruit of the tree or even a few branches and leaves. But if you know where to go back to the root, that was the beauty of the travel. I didn't just stumble on this. I was stumbling throughout, I'm telling you. When I went to Bolivia the first night, it was German, Italian, and a German, Italian, who else was in that war? Germans, Japanese. Japanese. That's who I met. And I look in Bolivia. Those big, beautiful Japanese farms. Been there, that's then. Remember, this was last year. This was 50 years ago. And to go across Lake Titicaca during that period, you haven't looked at the map. Lake Titicaca is 12,500 feet up. Geographically, it's the highest navigable lake in the world. Down the border of Bolivia and Peru. I'm crossing that. It's a group of white folks on that boat, a German tour group. 
And then the white boy is talking, he said, yeah, because it was all in the news, 71, 72, something. They're looking for so-and-so to escape Nazi uh, criminal. And here's a German tour group. Can you imagine? It just popped up. Right? The German tour group that came, I'm telling you, that Nazi was probably on the boat. Because all they got to do is leave one German in some little town and he loses his passport. Then they bring the other German and take him either back to Germany or go travel wherever they want to drop him off in Yugoslavia, anywhere. Right? Because they got connections all over the world. They still exist. The CIA was created by the Nazis. What's wrong with a, a, a song? Look, and for Oakland, no yours, for me, Oakland. Don't cry for me, Oakland. I'm saying that about me. You looking at me getting beat upside the head and they put me in jail every other week. Don't cry for me. Don't cry, don't have any tears for me. I'm the happiest man in the world, or the happiest one, I know. You see what I mean? Don't cry for me, Oakland. Same thing about the song. And then you ought to know that song. Why does everybody, you look at the people, why does everybody else in the world know the effects of that song? And you know. Why is it millions of women throughout Latin America singing? Why do they have a chorus on there and a choir? There are 2,000 people in the choir. They all saw that on the thing. 2,000 people for what? Why is it so spiritual? Because you listen to her lectures that you're going to get economic, uh, go forward, economicals, the spiritual. She's telling them, oh, you see it on the lectures. She was big. So you don't have that opportunity. I did. I can, I listened and look at Francisco Villa, Pancho Villa. You don't know what he did in Mexico. You don't know how uh, important. You don't know the U.S. troops chased him around uh, Mexico and he laughed at him. He was laughed at him. You know, General Pershing was General Pershing, Black Jack Pershing. He was down there in Mexico chasing Pancho Villa. Okay, so y'all have George Washington and other niggas around. We looked at the whole world and all of those people that made a commitment. There are people too. We base a lot of our studies on China based on